Hey guys, seeing as I can't sleep, um, I thought I'd talk to you about the relationship with my mother. Um, it's not easy talking to her about it, but um, yeah, I thought I'd get it out there basically. Um, my mum married him when I was when she was nineteen, and so they were basically a very young couple. Um, that was around. Um, when I was a baby and basically left my mum alone when I was about one year old. So basically she was a single mum for quite some time until she met Rog when I was about seven or eight years old. Um, and during that time he basically made semi-regular visits um, a few times a year. Um, Basically, he just shout me gifts. Um, our father-son bonding time was basically just playing video games and and yeah, kicking around a football. And funnily enough, I actually don't like football. I hate it. Um, so yeah, pretty ironic. Um, but he was basically, you know, pushing me into loving something I didn't really want to get into. Um, and yeah, he basically just, he wasn't there for me as much as I wanted him to be, um, and yeah, basically the relationship got worse, um, after I was eight years old, he basically just stopped seeing me as often, um, and yeah, basically just gave me cards and annual invitations to his birthday party. Um, I only went to his birthday once and it was a horrible experience. His friends were very repulsive and just really hard to get along with. They were just they just really made me uncomfortable. I really didn't fit in with them. Um so yeah, um and basically I remember um, getting a phone call from work when I was still at Coles and I was just jumped on the phone, I was like, yes, I still want to work, I'm, I'm, I'm in the car, I'm like, I just couldn't wait to get away. I basically, that was the one time I actually was excited to work because I needed some excuse to get away from that place because I was just, I just couldn't wait to leave, I needed an excuse, so save saved the day for once. Um, yeah. And, yeah, probably the worst memory I have with my dad is the one time he took me to the uh, Melbourne show. Um, he basically just ignored me. Um, he was, he spent most of the time just listening to his, um, headphones. Um, listen to his football game because obviously that was more important. That was the big priority for him. And and yeah, um and then um after he bought all these show banks for his friends, he decided to buy me this one dollar RSPCA sticker and I'll never forget that moment because I was just so devastated when he did that. I just thought, oh my god, is that how much I'm worth to you? And unfortunately, I didn't say those words to his face, but I wanted to. I was too young, but I really felt hurt and betrayed. Um, especially when he bought all these show bags for his friends and he basically just bought me nothing, you know. I just felt really hurt by that. Um... So yeah, um, the next big memory I have is um, my 13th birthday with um, my family. Um, he basically came to that and he basically started embarrassing me in front of everyone. Um, you know, calling me son and trying to sit on my lap and just just doing stuff like that. And everyone, and even my cousins were like, what is he doing? Like. You know, it's basically just, he made a fool out of me that day. And, 
and yeah, basically, um, the contract has been getting less and less over the years. Um, there was another time when he called um and basically re um refused to speak to me because his jaw was too sore. Oh, boohoo! Seriously, um. Clearly, that, that is seriously the most pathetic excuse I've heard not to speak to me. Like, really, if you can speak to mum, you can speak to me. And really, obviously, I'm not that important to you if, um, oh, sorry, your jaw hurts. Oh, you can't even say hello to me. Like, how pathetic is that? Um, yeah, the pinnacle of all this was, um, my 21st birthday. I was just, I was expecting a phone call from him, but, you know, I was kind of at the same time, you know, wasn't holding my breath. Um, and he didn't even call, he didn't even, you know, say happy birthday to me. You know, it's my 21st, it's my big day, and nothing. He didn't even send me a card, he didn't send me a present, nothing. Um, and a few days after that, like, after my birthday, he actually did call me. But the only thing he wanted was, I think it was a birthday present, and it was basically saying, oh, have you, have you bought me something yet? Have you sent it off? And I was like, are you fucking serious? You care more about your birthday and you, me sending you a present than my 21st. That was a few days ago. And... That was the last straw for me. I was like, no, nah, I've had it. You know, I just, I didn't want to be in a relationship with him anymore. I was like, no, nah, that's the end of it. So, basically, I haven't spoken to him for about five or six years now. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like, I barely even think about him. Occasionally I do, but... You know, he's so far away from my mind that, you know, he doesn't even exist to me anymore. He is, he's not even a father figure. You know, even though he's my biological father, he's not even a father figure to me. That's the way I feel. And, yeah, even when Father's Day comes up, I was still really awkward. Um, you know, not having a father in my life. He's definitely made it really hard, you know, just, yeah, I've basically had to rely on mum a lot more than most people would, for that reason, so, yeah, thanks for watching this video, see you guys.